All together. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Verse 2. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye that are men now serve him against unnumbered force. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Verse 3. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your arm. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer. Where duty calls of danger, be never wanting there. Verse 4. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victory. The song yes. to him that overcome a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus to pull down the present Elam denomination. Not of thee, Lord, because they have forgotten thy landmark, the landmark set to our brother George Jeffries. Mm. Father, it's our heart to restore, repair the breach. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that the storm already over the Elam denomination be not over, but shall bring a collapse to the preaching and teaching of heresy, mm. the denial of the creation, the denial of the resurrection as it relates to believers, the denial of the virgin birth, the bringing in of Jesuit belief, Father, in Jesus' name, we destroy these works of the devil and bring Elam back to where George Jeffries always wanted it to be. We mm -hmm. sing the old hymns here. Hallelujah. Not the hill pongs. The <laughs> old, old hymns. We love them, don't we, Lindsay? We do. The old the Elam chorus. No, that is in case you're not seeing it. Indeed, the old Elam choruses too. We've got mm. the books here. Oh, how Elam has gone astray! And so, Father, we bring it back. This has been going on, Lindsay. Now, nearly a year. These wow. programs on Elam, and there's so much more to tell. Yeah. Reminding us, of course, Absolutely. that a true ministry is a destructive ministry as well as a constructive mm. one. J. Edwin All in his book, The Church Must First Repent, 1937, quoting Jeremiah 110, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms 
to root out, to pull down, to destroy, throw down, to build, and to plant. Mm. People say you're trying to destroy Elam as it is now. Yes. We're going to plant Elam again on the foundations George Jeffries set. J. Edwin Orr wrote this. A constructive message is then not only desirable but necessary. But destructive ministry must precede constructive ministry. Good food, he writes, the fineness of the cream of the wheat of the gospel of Christ is eagerly assimilated by the Christian who lives in harmony with God. But all Christians are not in proper relationship with their Lord. The present obvious dearth of revival is largely due to the fact that the majority of Christians are out of touch with the source of divine mm. power. This is certainly the case with Elam today. A shocking, disgraceful rebellion which we have proven now over programs lasting nearly a year. When I was at Elam Bible College some years ago, Lindsay remembers this. One student came to me and said, that Dave, they're manifesting devils in the college devotion and no one is doing anything about it. That was our dear friend Greg, wherever he is now. We'd like to well. hear from him. I remember him. well. Also, I would say, uh, in Jesus' name, we're here to restore this landmark. Another student came to me and said, Dave, the Jesuits are in. I yeah, just I couldn't that. get my uh, head around it. But we've got the proof they were in because we've got their text to the new translations NIV being used by the Elam College at Nantwich in those days. And of course, they admit honestly it's an indefinite text. Mm. But Elam used to have a definite text. Albert Edzer, from whose book we'll be reading later, declared George Jeffries to the man of one book, the authorized version of the Bible. We're grateful, as we always are, to Paul Smith and his marvelous book, New Evangelicalism, The New World Order, which we believe is now, uh, uh, Elam is now a part of this. And he wrote a piece in this book talking of being a proponent of the New World Order and gives some history to the New World Order. He declared that it was founded in 1921 in New York City. The Council on Foreign Relations had functioned an elite super think tank, not an official U.S. government entity, but an autonomous council that gives advice on our nation's foreign policy, seeks to personally inform and persuade elected public officials and cultural social change agents of influence. Mm. Now our argument is, and we'll continue to prove it, <coughs> that agents of this new world order founded in 1921 have been infiltrating government offices, councils, universities, mm. colleges, and church movements to take them over into this new world order, which is what we witness today. Influential change agents in the United States government, military, generals, world leaders, and popes advocated the advantages of a new world order for many decades. Paul Smith continues take a look at the sampling of those advocating a new world order. And he gives actual quotes going back to 1962 
referring to Nelson Rockefeller, who gave a lecture at Harvard University saying, quote, unquote, and he's backed up the quote, that there is a new and free order struggling to be born. There is a fever of nationalism, but the nation state is becoming less and less competent to perform its international political tasks. Mm. Now, this it will increase when the COVID restrictions have been fully realized and we will witness nations saying, we can't work without each other. You wait and see. Also in 1973, quoted by Paul Smith, the New York Times published from a China traveler by David Rock David Rockefeller, who wrote about communist China. Now, this is interesting. One is impressed immediately, he wrote, by the sense of national harmony. There is a very real and pervasive dedication to Chairman Mao and Maoist principles. That's horrendous. Whatever... <laughs> Whatever the price, now see where we're coming from, the agents infiltrating political organizations, mm. NGOs, charities, we've proven it with charities yeah. time after time again, name the charities including the NSPCC, uh, One World Order and so forth, time after time again. Welcome back on live stream, having issues in Witton on internet coverage going on and off just stick with us if you want to watch the whole program we'll be uploading this onto youtube tomorrow on the restoration program playlist every creature commission tv but welcome back you get a hold of this we're exposing the new world order taking over political movements universities colleges um, and of course church movements we're not just saying it is political theory we're backing what we say with actual quotes which are mm. documented we're grateful to paul smith of new evangelicalism whatever the price of the chinese revolution he wrote it has obviously succeeded not only in producing more efficient and dedicated administration but also in fostering high morale and community purpose. We're dealing with Marxism taking over everywhere. And not only Marxism, but an offshoot of Marxism, namely Maoism. It's interesting to note this virus has come from China. President Trump called it the China virus. They're looking to take over the world. Everything. Then 1973 again, the Trilateral Commission founded by David Rockefeller as another elite independent think tank focused in initially on foreign policy issues related to the US, Europe and the Far East, widely viewed as a counterpart to the Council on Foreign Relations with the goal of one world government. And in one world government, there'll be no toleration for those who oppose what has now become known as the woke mm. culture. And I believe, Lindsay, over the last year, we have proven time and time again that Elam is indeed woke. Yes, we sure have. I like the way he said, Rockefeller said, whatever the price. Well, the price to pay was the Cultural Revolution when thousands and thousands of people were killed or put in prison camps. Yeah. And the worst people who had the worst persecution were, of course, the church, the true Christians in China. Yeah. yeah. Now, Lindsay is a Greek scholar mm -hmm. from St. Andrews University in 1970s. Now, let me say this. The big change in church movements has been in the taking out of the word of god mm. nearly every church movement in the world has lost its bible yeah. for the nestle alan text 
which admits itself to be indefinite. W.A.C. Rowe, which we've been referring to week after week, his book, One Lord, One Faith, declares all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. Now, God would not have passed on an indefinite text with a scripture like that. To be able to say this, he has arranged for the true word of God to be passed on from generation to generation along the Antioch line. Says W.A.C. wrote, there is only one adequate explanation for the Bible, God. It is full of his ways, quoting Isaiah 55, 9. The scriptures of truth are amazing. Whether we consider the majesty of their theme, the vastness of their influence, or their practical fruitfulness, the celestial truths enshrined in the visible words the grand old book are like nuggets of gold in the earth of which continual generations have surged. Quoting Psalm 119.72. We're dealing with an Elam which has rejected God's word. Mm. We're also grateful to Alan Kearns and his wonderful book, Apostles of Error. And he refers to a tremendous threat. As I said, New Evangelicalism is a movement that claims to hold very strictly to the historic, thank you, Lindsay, we're back on live stream. We're going in and out on live stream at the moment. There's clearly issues in Whitton. Welcome back. We've moved on to Alan Kern's book, Apostles of Error, under the section, A Tremendous Threat. Mm -hmm. As I said, new evangelicalism is a movement that claims to hold very strictly to the historic Christian faith. It professes to hold to the Bible as the inspired, inerrant, authoritative word of God. But it really poses a tremendous threat to the purity and power of Bible Christianity. It is a sad movement to have to deal with. Nehemiah could deal with Sambalat and Tobiah a lot more easily than he could with the son of the high priest. Yeah. That must have hurt. This is what makes it such a sad thing to have to deal with new evangelicalism. Mm -hmm. Here we come against some men who in the past have rendered great service to the cause of Christ. Must be careful to recognize there is a fairly wide spectrum of belief in the movement in regard to the matters about which we enter into dispute. And clearly there is a remnant left in Elam. Mm -hmm. But they fight against a system, the system we have been exposing. And we even discover in Albert Edsa's writing an attempt to amalgamate the Bible pattern with Elam itself. But we ask the question, what concord has Christ with Baal? Mm -hmm. Also, says Alan Kearns, we must sadly confess that the fundamentalist movement has not always presented an attractive appearance to men who may be in agreement with That's us. That's definitely true. Especially to women who may be in agreement with it even more. <laughs> exactly, right. Now, this is no excuse for other men's compromise, he writes. But there is, as we move the book over so we can put it under the light and read it to you, this is so interesting. 
But there is unfortunately too much truth in Ronald Nash's criticism of some fundamentalists who often fight brethren simply because they do not agree with them on minor issues. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Of these men, he says, that when there are no more liberals within range, they don't stop fighting and that their mottos become holding forth the word of strife or rightly dividing the church of God. Would yeah. to God this sarcastic criticism were void of truth, but it is not. However, having said all this, it is a fact that new evangelicalism represents an inexcusable departure from the mm. biblical position of historic fundamentalism. And this we place on Elam and is a particularly harmful weakening of the belief and stand of Bible Christianity. Mm. Belief particularly regarding the Bible, this is what we're taking on with Elam. Stand particularly with regard to liberalism are key words. We will therefore limit our discussion to these two major mm -hmm. areas, how new evangelicalism regards the Bible, how it treats the doctrine of separation. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a book, Lindsay, I've just sent for from a second-hand bookshop in the United States of America. This is Richard J. Coleman's book, Issues of Theological Conflict. Now, this is so interesting. He describes the change that's taken place in the attitude to Scripture by new evangelicals. Now, I was at Elam Bible College for four years, and I was either misled or lied to. I remember one day asking whether the NIV was the same, and was told, oh, yes. Now, this was given to me by a lecturer called Malcolm Hathaway, a famous name. Now, he either mistakenly answered that way, thinking he was knowing the truth, or giving me under the Jesuits an outright lie. It's not for me to say which one it is, but it is for me to say it was one of them. Now, Richard Coleman writes, in the past, evangelicals stood firmly with fundamentalists in their belief that Scripture is correct about all matters or none at all. Today, more than a few evangelicals are reopening the issue by discussing whether plenary and verbal inspiration necessitates inerrancy. To be more precise, the question is whether Scripture includes only that which is revelatory and contains no other, or whether it may also include non-revelatory matter which contains error. That was exactly what Elam was all about at the college. In other words, what matters must be un included under the umbrella of infallibility in order to ensure the Bible's trustworthiness? One. Matters concerning faith and practice. Mm. Two, matters concerning historical and scientific factuality. Mm. Or three, matters related only directly, such as anthropology. In, inter, indirectly, it is, sorry. Matters related only indirectly, thank you, Lindsay, such as anthropology, astronomy, physiology, geography, zoology, or biology. Mm -hmm. Now, this goes into more of an in-depth study. We'll cover just some of it, not all of it. Under the heading, Weakening Conviction, says Alan Kearns, this wonderful book. Welcome back, live stream again. We're coming in and out, but we're glad you're sticking with us. God bless you. You can see the whole program be uploaded tomorrow onto YouTube. Mm -hmm our playlist, restoration program, Every Creature Commission TV. Coleman's book, he writes, is dedicated to forging a new middle ground between evangelicals and liberals. Most new evangelicals welcome such rapprochement, but to facilitate it, 
there has been an evident and fatal weakening in their attitude towards the subject of inspiration and inerrancy. Mm. Clark Pinnock mourned, there is evidence at present of a weakening conviction about inerrancy among evangelical scholars. And we're just tonight going to look at the three positions outlined here. Coleman cites Pinnock's analysis setting out the three positions on Scripture represented in New Evangelicalism. On examining the prevailing schools of thought, we can readily sympathize with Pinnock's lament, but he is also is part of the drift. Yeah. The three positions set out in his analysis are as follows. One, unqualified biblical inerrancy, the belief that no error can be justly charged against the Bible as originally given. Now, we here at the Bible College of Wales Original Vision actually go further than that. We believe writing as originally given is a cop-out mm. because we believe the word has been passed on miraculously from generation to generation. And the word we have on the Antioch line in the King James Bible is as originally given. Mm. Two, modified inerrancy the belief that there are some errors in the Bible as originally given, but that they are of a minor nature and do not destroy faith in its inerrancy. Keep pressing that button, Lindsay. It will yeah, get there in the annoying. end. <laughs> it's not annoying. Just, just these just, things happen, Lindsay. I know. These things happen. We just lost live stream again. All right. Praise the Lord. If you're watching the recorded version, you're getting all of it. Our live stream channel is having difficulties tonight. But we know our live stream people will come to watch this program. It is so important on the recorded version Every Creature Commission TV channel, YouTube, the playlist mm. is Lindsay. What? The playlist so, is Lindsay. Mm, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Here. The playlist is Restoration Program. Oh, is that what you mean? That's the right. playlist. Three, limited infallibility, the belief that the only part of the Bible we can be sure is free from error is what deals directly with salvation. Apart from this central area, there is error of both fact and doctrine. Now, let me just talk about that. This is a matter of life and death here. If you don't accept the whole word has been passed on, we have the Bible as God originally gave it. Mm. You ain't got a ministry. You've got a discussion textually critical ministry, but I'm talking you ain't got a Christian ministry. Mm. You can't set the blind free. You can't set the those who are terminally ill free. you got to believe God's word. Smith, said Smith Wigglesworth, going back to early 20th century Pentecostalism. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by how I feel. I am moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of Almighty God. And I believe John Wesley believed the word of Almighty God. Mm. And he is outlined in George Jeffrey's own book, Healing Rays, under the heading, The Dispensation of the Holy Ghost Continues. Said George Jeffries of the great apostle of faith, it is well to remind the conservative element in the Christian church of today who regard anything in the nature of miraculous healing as unorthodox that no lesser person than the great founder of Methodism believed in divine healing. Mm -hmm. In his notes on the New Testament, he records his views on James 5.14 thus. This is a direct quote from John Wesley. This single conspicuous gift which Christ 
committed to his apostles. Welcome back on live stream. We're on John Wesley. Remained in the church long after the miraculous gifts. Indeed, it seems to have been designed to remain always. And St. James directs the elders, who were the most, if not the only, gifted men to administer it. This was the whole process of physics in the church till it was lost through unbelief, declared John mm. Wesley. How many in Methodist churches believe? You must not be in a church which rejects the inerrancy of God's word. In his journal, he gives his own testimony of healing. When I was about seven and twenty, I began split, spitting blood and continued for several years. Eleven years after, I was in the third stage of consumption. It pleased God in three months to remove this also. This hath God wrought. He believed the word of Almighty God. He was so close in intercession to the Father. Oh, Father, how Methodism has strayed, denying its founder, just as Elam have done likewise. And so, Lindsay, we come to further reading of Albert Edsa's book, Set Your House in Order. And this is awesome reading. And we read of an attempt to bring together Jeffrey's new movement, the Bible Pattern Fellowship, with Elam on the basis is good for uh, dwelling in unity, for brethren to dwell in unity, as it is. But I'm putting to you that it's not good for rebels to join with Christians. Mm. Back to the Nehemiah story again, isn't it? It is. An infiltration right in the heart of the temple from the high priest Eliashib himself. And this, I believe, is a sad passage we're going to read mm. and conclude with tonight. Said Albert Edser, Reconciliation on righteous grounds is commendable at all times. But how has this sorry state of affairs come about in view of the rejection by Elam of our godly leader and the message, set your house in order? Mm. In other words, Lindsay, they weren't brethren at all. They were rebels. Once having had the support of the advisory committee, the December 1983 issue of the Patton magazine provides the answer under the heading, Good and Pleasant. Quoting directly the magazine, with great attitude, with great gratitude to God for the evident guidance of the Holy Spirit, for the precious spirit of unity prevailing, especially upon the times of prayer, seeking the face of God, the advisory committee of the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship and the executive of the Elam Church Incorporated issued the following joint statement and declaration of intent. Believing we have been signally led of God in our consultation and discussions, we avow in our official magazines that it is our decision and determination mutually agreed in the oneness of the Spirit to seek to work ever more closely together at local, regional, national and international levels. We call on the members of our fellowships to pray with us that we may be led step by step to those avenues of mutual service, ministry, and fellowship that will bring about what we feel to be the fulfillment of God's will. I believe this was a trap. Mm. Said Albert Edson, remember, we're in a hindsight situation. He wasn't. Mm. This, with its several references to God and the Holy Spirit, was an accompanied by a photograph of 17 persons as named with a drawing of clasped hands, a symbolism depicting Psalm 133. These consisted of eight Elam Alliance Executive Council ministers, 
part of the majority of the executive presbytery of the Elam Church Incorporated. Four of the seven members of the advisory committee of the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship. Three Elam district superintendents and two other Elam ministers. Such a declaration as this, continues Edsa, to those of us who have never wavered from the reason for the division in the Elam movement, poses the question, what has the advisory committee of the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship accomplished in committing the fellowship to an Elam church incorporated in this way? Exactly my point. These who have had the advantage of reading and supporting the numerous writings of George Jeffries and others, as well as of hearing him speak, of seeing the book Fight for the Faith and Freedom mm -hmm. and the review as given in this chapter, have they achieved the desired unity, as is implicit in the joint statements and declaration of intent, and as they claim by way of justification in writing the Churches of the Fellowship on March 1st, 1984, on the dialogue with Elam. Our aim is to remove the bitterness and malice of bygone days as we seek a righteousness, a righteous solution and reconciliation before the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and thus realize the cherished wish and desire of our beloved principle. Mm. This is almost unbelievable, declares Albert Edson, to remove the bitterness and malice of bygone days on whose part with the disfellowshipping of the founder still presumably in Elam's records and without a public word of regret having been expressed since for just shocking, sorry, having strange, can we just, just clear that, Lindsay, please? Um, oh. To remove the bit, I'm going to repeat this again. Very Lindsay, sorry, you're going folks. too quickly with it, darling. Right. We're welcome back on live stream. What up. happens is, it always does, Lindsay. That's how it happens. What happens is you have to press it in longer. Oh, That's the that. problem. Okay. What we're saying is we're having some technical difficulties. Live stream's going on and off. We're determined to see this program through. We're reading Set Your House in Order by Albert Edser. And it's in relation to an attempt to bring Elam and the Bible pattern together, it being founded on sand rather than the rock, in our view here. And clearly, this is what's coming out through Albert Edser. It is this that we're reading at this time. This is almost unbelievable, declared Edser, mm. to remove the bitterness and malice of bygone days on whose part, with the disfellowshipping of the founder still presumably in Elam's records without a public word of regret, having been expressed since for such a shocking action, and to realize what he desired with him outside of Elam until the end of his life, and what he stood for rejected over and over again. Are we to accept that a reconciliation which was not possible during the lifetime of the principle, Desmond Cartwright's book, page 156, has now come to pass through this move of theirs. Surely they cannot be so naive as to think this, when all they have done is to effectively gag themselves as regards protesting against Elam's central government system of control, as George Jeffries presented, have weakened the witness of the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship and given moral support to Elam's contention against the scriptural sovereignty being established in its own Elam Four Square Gospel Alliance churches throughout the country. They have therefore accomplished nothing in furthering George Jeffrey's vision for the Elam movement and these churches he founded and for which he paid so great a price. He came out and was free to speak. They have gone in and are bound. Mm. How right Albert Edsa was. Absolutely. And we saw that manifest in the Elam Bible College. Mm. We bear witness of that in the yes. name of the Lord. 
the steps leading up to this state of affairs in the history of the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship have been over a period of years, resulting in two former members of the advisory committee becoming Elam Foursquare Gospel Alliance ministers in Elam Alliance churches. Mm. The seven members of the advisory committee of the fellowship being received into the Elam Church Incorporated, finally renounced by Principal George Jeffries in November 1940 on the formation of the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship. Yeah, the man. seven members being pastors, R.G. Tweed, G.I. Francis, E. Marsh, R.W. Tutor, J.S. Reed, Una McMillan, and G. Gervin, with one of them elected in Elam to serve on the executive presbytery of the Elam Church Incorporated, a minority of one with the remaining nine being ministers of the Elam Foursquare Gospel Alliance. Mm -hmm. We we spotted this. We knew this was happening, and we know that what we'd been dealing with and what we were taught at Elam was that of rebellion rather than of submission to the cause of the founder. Furthermore, continues Albert Edson. Isn't this interesting? Mm, very, dying. very sad. Yeah. The Nottingham Bible Pattern Church, which like others is now affiliated to the Elam movement in the Elam Church Incorporated, not only were these bastards happy enough to be able to take over churches at the beginning, they were looking in their attempt for apparent unity mm. for a takeover of what George Jeffries newly founded. Lindsay, we're dealing with such evil here. I know, and hypocrisy. Absolutely. Because they're trying to make themselves look good all the time. They do. Had an Elam minister inducted as pastor in 1986, proclaimed by both Elam and the fellowship as a unique occasion. This is the church associated with the birth of the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship which saw the aforementioned renunciation of the Elam Church Incorporated. Cooperation, as Edsa, yes, but entirely in the interest of the Elam movement, bringing about what he said would happen, a division in the fellowship. This is obliquely referred to in Mr. Cartwright's book, page 157, where he writes a number of their churches have joined the Elam Church Incorporated in recent years. It is to be hoped that one day there may be a full reconciliation. All of them in, no matter on what grounds. This close contact with Elam in this way has had other repercussions. Mm -hmm. This is so terrible. I know. And Bible pattern is so small today. Brian Mason and I went to one meeting in Carlisle, now called the Elam Free Church, and Bible pattern in brackets. They actually are allowed an advert in British Church newspaper, which we have been rejected in the past. Um, and we went there, and and many respects, we saw no signs and miracles, as you would expect from a George Jeffries church. Um, we've got to restore Lindsay Elam. I know. We've got, we've got to have a real Elam again. The advisory committee, continues Albert Edson, has committed the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship in support of the Pentecostal World Conference, together with Elam and others, despite Principal Jeffrey's reasoned contention and warning note relative to the conference. Mm -hmm. we, another one was called the European Pentecostal Theological Association. Yeah. Another dodgy institution. I'd I love to have worked with George Jeffries. What a man of God he was. What an honor it would have been. I know. Although the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship as such is legally bound to subscribe to maintain the seven fundamentals, the seventh being of vital importance to each local Bible Pattern Church as to its government, 
They were prepared as a committee in 1984 to have the fundamentals of the Elam Foursquare Gospel Alliance and the Elam Church Incorporated substituted for these, with other changes in the constitutions of the fellowship. As these 12 fundamentals are doctrinal and non-governmental, what did they think they were gaining by adopting mm -hmm. them in the place of the seven? Certainly this again was in the interest of Elam with the fellowship churches, the losers. The endeavor was vigorously opposed by some of us and it was quietly dropped. Can be said, continues Albert Edser in this book, Set Your House in Order, that the World Revival Crusade has the same fundamentals as Elam. This is because we were in the Elam movement when the crusade was founded. Mm. But these give it no authority of control constitutionally over any local church such as the Elam Alliance has under its constitution, deed poll, and property trust corporation. Our aim since the crusade's inception in 1935 has been to pioneer to win mm. souls, to be a help and blessing to churches, and to give valuable support to the work of God overseas. Now, these actions of the advisory committee led to the church of which I am pastor becoming an independent Bible pattern Pentecostal church after many years in the yes. fellowship. The irony of the situation being that Principal George Jeffries died in the fellowship not having mm. achieved what he strove after for the Elam movement, and with ourselves now outside the official fellowship, without having deviated from the fight for the faith and freedom. So indeed now, they had infiltrated the Bible pattern to split it. There is this redeeming feature. We're still free to speak and write as he was. Mm. We can be sure of this. The fault does not lie with the truth, but with those who are prepared to gloss over the past in order to entertain such misguided cooperation. It's called compromise. One may well ask, how can the Bible Pattern Church Fellowship be expected to make progress in the face of such actions by its present leaders? Mm. Furthermore, the sovereignty issue, having been rejected by Elam, it was clearly intended that the fellowship as such should go forward as a separate entity without compromise and free yes. to protest as necessary, as was the founder, yet without enmity towards the Elam movement. George Jeffries was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. No. This is why when looking back to the extraordinary experience of 1937, he could write, God bestowed the greatest honor upon me, not when he called me to preach to crowded congregations in the Royal Alberts Hall, London, Amen. and in other large mm. halls at home and abroad, and before royalty at Stockholm, and but when he called me to renounce and denounce Babylonianism in organized religion, and suffer for the sake of free, self-governing churches according to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So powerful, Lindsay. It is. Notwithstanding the half-truths that have been circulated against me and all I have suffered, not one day has passed since December the 1st, 1939, without thanksgiving rising from my full heart to God for the courage he gave me to renounce the wrong that day and for the abiding peace that has settled in my soul. Praise As Lord. one so close to him for so many years, I can say his whole demeanor was a constant witness to the truth of this. He has been spurred seeing the present situation, which has mm. foolishly been brought about by these leaders in the fellowship, one of whom wrote at his death, we must, by the grace of God, endeavor to to follow the example he has left us and the full vision he had must still be ours also if we are to be instrumental in bringing other souls to christ i close this chapter with the tribute of the reverend raymond h belton 
George Jeffries, whose sanctified personality and spirit-filled life moved thousands, was never more truly noble than when he sacrificed himself for the cause mm. he had at heart. The conviction came to him that there was something wrong with the organization he had built up. It was not sufficiently democratic, central control being in the hands of a small executive council, which he was president. The annual conference was for ministers only. There was no lay representation, and whatever may be the reader's view on the vexed question of church's church government, he will be stirred to admiration of a man who, at great personal cost, was true to his conception of truth. Yeah. Wow, what, Lindsay, we've covered. This, I believe, was a complete New World Order plan. Exactly. For it's exactly and what's happening now. They operate this. They've tried to infiltrate us. They've threatened us. Mm. And here we are, in effect, in our small corner. And had our resources stolen from us in the same way as the Bible pattern Yeah, it's had. been great personal cost to us great as well as it was to dear Lindsay. Principal Jeffries. We've been through the same thing. Yet we're standing on restoring the Bible College of Wales under the division of Reese mm -hmm. Howes. That was stolen. It's The movements are stolen time after time again. And we are having to ensure now there's this restoration of the Bible College of Wales, and how it include Elam as well, has to be handed on to future generations who won't compromise. That's our some of our work now to ensure. Mm -hmm. We've given up all our wealth for this. We've seen it come and infiltrate, threaten us, take legal action against us, just as what happened to George Jeffries. But you cannot bring together Christ with Baal. Absolutely. But when you refuse to do it, you have to be prepared to pay the price. The system comes against That's you. That's right. Lindsay, will you conclude this um, meeting tonight in holy prayer? Mm -hmm. Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful time of revelation of what really happened to and through your mighty servant, George Jeffries. We thank you that he stayed holy to the Lord through every temptation and every pressure. We honor his memory. We thank you that he is now with you in glory. And we trust that by trusting and obeying him, people will recognize who watch and listen to this program that there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And we thank you for the joy he continued to have in his spirit and the peace that he continued to have in his spirit and the love that he continued to have in his spirit. Your agape love, despite all the weapons and fiery darts of the enemy that came against them. And we thank you now that your truth, you are, your son Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And that we have a Holy Ghost to lead us into all truth. And we thank you that the words of truth are put into the mouths of thy servants and those empty vessels for you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. When we walk with, with the, the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. 
but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, for a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh or a tear, can we abide while we trust and obey? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favour he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, and we walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, when he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Everybody, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory. We know the victory is ours. We thank you for joining us for this very, very special restoration program. Thank you, Lindsay, for being with us this week. We're glad you are back. And we're here today to declare the victory. We've exposed Elam now for nearly a year. I believe today it is nothing but a cult of any control. We're here to restore it back to the vision and claim the property back to be given to the local people who found it.